Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear's Workshop. In today's video, we are gonna be doing a tear down and a rebuild of a brand new Echo HC155 hedge trimmer. So let's go take a look. Okay everyone, so today what we're gonna be doing is we, we're gonna take this brand new HC155 where you're gonna completely disassemble it. You can see it's never been used, see those blades? are brand new where the purpose of this video is so if you have this model or a model like it you can go to any part of this video and see how we disassemble it and how it might go back together first thing we're going to do is we're going to re remove the pull string assembly off now i have never worked on an hc155 also so i just want to make a note of that so i've got a bunch of different tools here it looks like instead of using the same size torque that they used to use like on the 152 models they've gone ahead and put uh, allen wrenches uh, torque bolts and all different sizes so uh, i may have to stop and look for tools because they've decided to make this a little bit more difficult but as always the first thing is we're going to we're going to start taking off these covers first thing that a lot of people have a problem with is these uh is the pull cord assembly and with them not working whether the string breaks or the spring breaks so let's start there on the um, HC-152s they had one unit here where if you needed to take this off you took off about six bolts and it pops right off this they've made a little bit different they've screwed it into the gas tank and they've screwed it into the cover for the for the muffler so it's going to make it a little bit more tedious to take off but let's go ahead and do that This is the muffler and this is the baffle on it. Uh, there's a piece on here that's often taken out. I'm not recommending that you do it, but it's a screen that keeps uh, from flaming exhaust from coming out here and catching something on fire. But those often get clogged with debris or uh, just soot. And then the muffler has no place to put its gases and you'll have a motor that will stall out because of that. Okay, this is our pull cord right here. Uh, you can see the mechanism in there. Um, there is a big spring in underneath this. We're not gonna pull that out. Well, we can pull it out a little bit and we'll show you what, what we're looking at. Once these things get unwound, they're really hard to put back together. And you can buy the, a new one as a complete set, usually for like 20 to $40, depending on uh, what they're charging for it. But we'll, we'll pull out that center screw real quick here. Okay, so this is your assembly right here. You've got a secondary spring right here, and then you've got the top piece of plastic. This holds this all together. Underneath here, there's a big winding coil, and I'll find another one for you that's already open. I don't like to open them because they don't go back, but we'll find another one. So this is one off of an old junk one and I'll show you what it what it looks like. This is something that takes a lot of patience to fix to rewind one of these. But we'll take this off and you can see the coil in there. And if you pull that out, getting them back in there is very, very difficult. It can be done if you have tons and tons of patience, but it's almost just easier to buy a new one. All right, and since we're on ignition, we're gonna talk about this. This mechanism right here rotates this. This is, your, this is your ignition coil right here. Ignition coil has magnets on it that when they hit this spot right here, it triggers it to send the spark out. And these have to be gapped in a, cer a certain distance if you're ever having to replace this. We've replaced numerous ones of these. Um, the best way to gap these would be to take like a business card, a normal business card, and you can actually, when, you, when you're putting this on, 
you put the business card in between and that's how you would gap it and then you pull the card out when you're done. We're not gonna pull this out yet because we have to get more plastics taken off of this. But this is one of the, one of the most common things is having to repair these, okay? You'll notice in here that there is a, a divot right there. That is when your cord gets too long and it's just kind of, you got a cord that's hanging like this. You can use that. That's that's your space where you're wrapping the, uh, the line. You can tighten it up. You get some slack in there and you put it in that spot, but we're not gonna go into detail on that. And then you kind of wrap it around on the inside to make it tighter. So we're gonna go ahead and put this aside, but this is your pull cord assembly. Next, we're gonna take off our carburetor assembly. We still have gas in our fuel tank. They filled it up at the shop and I've never taken out. Always use a fuel filter if, or a, um, an air filter. Always use the air filter. If you don't have an air filter, what is going to happen is you will get dirt into your motor. Your motor will eventually lose compression and it will fail. It will shorten the lifespan immensely. All right, so for to take off the carburetor, the first thing you're gonna do is you go. You just need a Phillips screwdriver. There are two screws holding the carburetor in. They are long screws. There are gaskets underneath this. Always use your gaskets. If you don't use your gaskets, you're gonna have a, an air pressure problem. So here are two bolts, our filter holder. Now as far as your carburetor goes, you're still attached to it. You can see we've got one gasket right here. We're going to leave that on there for right now. This is your throttle cable. This is going to be your low, your low idle set right here. You can change it by changing where this screw is. Uh, so you loosen up this piece right here and then you could tighten this this nut right here and that will change your idle we're going to leave it right where it is now that we've got it detached now to detach the cable this idle cable is held in with it's got a little ball at the end and it fits in this in this uh, brass piece right here so you, you have to turn it like this you see where the line goes that's where the cable goes it slips through this you could, once you've got it all the way through, you push it through. Didn't work. Okay, this this one has a uh, like a, a spring around it to help keep the uh, the the idle from popping out. I've never had that happen without this. It's a little spring that goes around this, and we're going to remove it because that just makes it harder to do uh, maintenance when you have to take things apart and you have things like this on here. Things that actually never have an effect. So we're going to remove this and throw it away just so that it's more serviceable. Okay. The ring just disappeared. Oh, it's right here. Let's see if I could show it to you. So this ring was like placed around it like this to keep the cable from sliding off. Never ever had an issue with the cable sliding off. But we've got the cable detached and now we have the carburetor still attached to the gas tank. Um, so we're just gonna pull these two off. We've got two lines. One is uh, intake and one is outtake. So when it's overpressurized, gas flows back into the, into the fuel tank. This is a source of uh, many problems for people, and they don't realize it. Uh, one, all these all these little pipes, these plastic tubes, they will they will rot, they will dry out. Uh, sometimes they'll just get clogged. Uh, one of these has a fuel filter on it; the other one does not. We're going to just pull these off. We have a little bit of a gas leak. These have never been pulled off. I'm trying to pull them off gently. So, okay, so one popped out here and the other one popped off on the other side. 
So we're, we're going to go ahead and set this aside. Um, we will, since we have this off, we're going to take off the uh, the brass plug so that we can adjust adjust the idle on this carb when we need, not the idle, but the uh, the leanness of this carb uh, when we want to, instead of having to uh, find a tiny little screwdriver uh, getting in, into that little hole. I did another video on how to adjust this and I'll provide a link for that right here. Look up top or, or there, one, one of those two sides. So in on how to adjust this carburetor. Okay, so to remove this gas, it's gonna be, this gas tank, it, there's one more screw or bolt, it's behind this handle, so this handle's gonna have to come off first, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave the gas tank on for right now. Let's remove the spark plug. Spark plug, looking real good because it's brand new, as it should. That last screw is a little bit of a pain because of the angle that they put it in. If you've watched my channel before, you've probably heard me complain about engineers before. And where to how they set things up for to make things difficult for people anyway this comes off this is off now uh, the purpose of getting this off is we're going to detach these blades from the actual motor and we're going to detach this handle right here uh, to, to get everything apart so in order to take the handle and the blades off there are four Four bolts like this you see there's two here and there's two right on the other side and those will hold the uh, the blade assembly to the motor um, while we're here we're going to also disconnect this line right here this is from the ignition coil to the starter switch oh they they, they soldered that crap on they didn't solder it, but they heat shrink it. That's good. Well, we'll take off the coil then. This piece is something that often would get separated. Either the ground would come off right here, or this would get separated, but using the heat shrink on it actually will keep it together. Um, and I'm gonna, I can disconnect it from the ignition coil in order to get it off, which would be better for this demonstration. So we slid that off. We didn't pull on it, we slid it off using a, a screwdriver. So next up, we'll just take this handle off. And for that, you just need a Phillips and a, and a pair of pliers to hold this. And then this will slide right out, hopefully. Remember, this is the first time I've dis disassembled one of these, so it could be a little different. Okay, so here's our complete handle. Uh, Things that will break on the handle are obviously these switches right here. These rarely break, but these these wires do get hot and sometimes get cut. If your negative's cut, you're, you, you won't be able to shut it off. You, you might be able to shut it on, but you may not be able to shut off. Some of these are depending on, on how it is. Um, this is your throttle cable, and this goes to your ignition coil. Here's an older one that we've we've taken apart to replace something or take parts out, maybe, maybe a spring or something like that. And you, you can pull this up um, and then you've got your full wiring harness and then all this comes apart. Um, inside of it, you'll, you can see your trigger guard, your trigger, you've got a spring in here, you've got the wiring that, go, that goes into it and then 
this on screws right here to take this out just comes off pretty easy a lot of times um, if you're doing maintenance on this tighten this bolt up because or this nut tighten this nut up because these nuts tend to come off and then the then the on off switch falls inside the uh, handle and that's a bit of a pain so you always want to make sure that this piece is tight so that this doesn't fall in like that but you press down on this and then it'll lift right up and you can see everything this is the the same handle we're just not going to disassemble it because I have a disassembled one right here nice used disas dirty one this is what I was talking about before this is the piece that would come uh, become disconnected but now they they've heat shrunk it on there which is great we're just going to put this one aside right now all right now we're going to take off the last bolt for the uh, gas tank I'm just sticking some of these bolts right back in where they came from so I know where they go later I'm going to set this aside as you can see we we're down to nearly our our coil in our block is in our muffler let's uh let's get that coil off or let's see what what fitting do we have in here we're gonna take our muffler off again the only reason you'd be taking this off is if you're replacing the motor for some strange reason or if you needed to uh, clean out your screen So here's the heat shield that goes around the uh, around the muffler. Here is the muffler. We're going to take these two pieces off so you can see that screen. All right, this is the screen that often will get clogged. You can see it's perfectly clean right now because we're dealing with a new, new unit. So it just peels off. That's actually just a gasket and this is separate. So to clean this, what you would do is you would just take a flame to it, uh, like a butane torch or something, and just burn it. Just burn it up real hot and all the crusties will 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 come off of it and they'll drop right off and then you just blow it out washing it or trying to poke holes through it never gonna work it's got to be burnt off so let's go ahead and put this aside okay so next we want to separate our blades from our motor so we have four bolts right here and here this one and the one on the opposite side always difficult to get to uh, just because that's where they put them to make it hard for you um, as a side note oh this design's a little different we've got two extra bolts right there so we're going to take those two off first but as a side note there's your zerk screw to put in grease which you should do as often as you possibly can um, just keeping these things greased up will make them last a lot longer so this design is a bit different than the 152's they put a bar across here to keep the handle from wobbling which is a great idea because these handles would wobble let me show you on another one so this is the old design we're missing one bolt right there but you can see there's nothing going across so these would loosen up and the handle would start to shake and then then the blades would start to shake because this is all part of the mech same mechanism to hold in the blades so once this starts loosening up that means that, that the blades are loose but you can see how these are different um, in the sense that it's got this bar that's going across that you can see down here which is much better that's an improvement 
All right, we're going to go to the next level. Take off the other ones. Okay, we've got the four screws out. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, two of these, the two back screws were really a bear. Uh, they're locked in pretty tight on the first time coming off. Uh, one of them is completely stripped out. I've got more screws, so I'm just going to replace them. But that separates the motor from the blades right here. Okay, and this is I'll show you the two pieces individually. Um, this is our block. This rotates. And as it rotates, it actually spreads out uh, these, the centrifugal force forces it to spread out and it gets wider. And what it does is it catches this drum right here and it spreads out within that. And that grabs this and this, when you turn this, rotates the blades. That is how that works. Okay, so we've got our motor off we're going to take the last piece that we're going to take off uh, this is just the carburetor spacer between this and the block there's just two screws in here there's really not much to it um, so we'll just take that off real quick all right so this is just the spacer and the gasket and that's right there goes right into the piston so if you're looking to see if your piston scored without actually opening up the whole engine block this is one way you can do it you can just rotate this through put a light right in that hole and that's your piston that will be going up and down and you can see if there's any scoring you likewise you can also look uh, through the top of the spark plug hole but you won't be able to see if they're scoring um, if you put a little uh, like a, a, a little uh, scope camera in there, you might be able to see the walls. So let's take off the ignition coil. A big thing that people often need to do on this is replace these blade units. You can purchase a this unit, this full unit with the blades, with the gearbox, and the handle. You could purchase them online. Um, I know on the 152s they were about $130 each. I don't know what the cost is for them for this, but the gearbox is very similar and, and the design is very similar. Not exact, obviously we have this pretty bar here. Um, so I imagine that the price would be the same. And if you want to do that, that's a, that's a great idea. It's a lot cheaper than just trying to replace a blade. Uh, we've got another video on how to sharpen these blades and uh, how to tighten the bolts and make sure that they're running right. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to separate these blades from here real quick. It's going to take a couple minutes. We've got to take off these six uh, screws right here and they have this really odd design. Uh, there's a there's a a screw on this side that goes to this. This holds the handle down. This cannot be too tight. There's another screw. You can see the head of it here with the nut on it. Now this one you actually have to line up the hole right here. In order to loosen that bolt, we have to line these line these two holes up usually right about here then you put a Phillips head screwdriver in there and it goes straight across to I think I've got well, maybe not uh, and that's how you would tighten that one it's right right there so you take an eight millimeter or a pair of pliers and this one has to be tightened as tight as it can go anything to the left of this has to be hand tightened or tightened down and then loosened a quarter of a turn so that they rotate. So we're going to take this one off first, 
because this one's always the tricky one. You got to be able to rotate the blades. And there's the nut. And the screw is still in there. Let's see if we can pop that out. It'll probably it'll come out later. There's just too much stuff in its way. The the head is blocked. Echo has made some changes on their bolts. I'm not going to say that these are better because in the past you could take a pair of pliers and you could tighten them if you're out in the field and you're working. You can tighten this nut with the, the bolt that was on the other side which actually had the six sided bolt. These are Allen's. So that means you're going to need to have an Allen and a 10 millimeter handy in order to uh, to pull these apart. That's too small. We're going to go ahead and pull these two off and because this is that's new for me so let's get a socket for that. Okay, that's our handle off. Okay, we're gonna put this in our pile. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do, uh, cause I don't want this, is I don't want this guard. Um, the guard doesn't do anything, gets in the way, prevents you, uh, makes it difficult to sharpen the blade. So I am gonna take this all apart with my crappy drill. So we're gonna unscrew each one of these bolts. As you can see, the guard comes off fairly easy. We're gonna put this in the pile. That's the other guard. We generally take that one off too. So we've taken the, the nuts off of each one of these bolts holding the blades together, and now you have to unscrew each, each nut. Each uh, bolt, they're actually separate. They're actually screwed into the blade. It looks like these have uh, extra, like a square nut put into each one on the blade to help keep it in there. Unfortunately, I, I'm sure that has a purpose and might keep it from shaking or something, but what will happen is when these bolts fall off when they're out in the field, we will end up losing the square piece also, which is unfortunate because now we just have another thing that's going to get lost. So now that all the bolts are out, you can see the blades will spread apart. You've got two blades and then you've got one piece on here that actually goes in to the gearbox. The other two pieces, well they go into the gearbox, but this this first piece is what these two screws hold in that first piece and they're, they're in there real tight. These two move back and forth. This one does not move. All right, so we've taken off the six bolts. We're taking off the cover. This is going to be filled with grease. It's going to be very slimy. So we've got a gasket on there, as you can see. We've got what, what looks like to be lithium grease. Okay, so they've changed this around since the last model. This is a little bit different. Um, this piece right here uh, is going to, here, we'll just pop them off. So this would be a connecting piece on the gearbox. Right in here is going to be a big piece of cloth that is going to be U-shaped. We'll pull this out. And that's to seal up the outside so the, the grease doesn't leak out. Now at this point, these blades should pop out. So they come out like that and they will separate. So if you need to replace a blade, you're going to need to go through a lot of these actions that we just did to get to the to get to the gearbox. Sometimes you'll have gears that will break and these just pop out right here. I'll pull out the uh, 
this gear. So you see this one. Sometimes you could have a, t a tooth break or something, and then we've got another piece on the bottom. And when you put all these back together, they need to go exactly in like that. There's also another gear right here. This has been known to break on a couple occasions, and these will pop out. Um, I'm not going to clean it all out, but there may be a ring on it. Um, there may not be. I know there's a ring around here, but uh, you, it's yeah, it's at the bottom here, and you can see the direct correlation of when you turn this drum, you're turning that gear, and when you turn that gear turning all the other pieces that are making everything move. Always keep this filled up with grease. Okay, Very important. So that pretty much concludes the disassembly and we'll go to the assembly real quick and we're going to go as fast as we can of course. Um, but we've got all of our pieces laid out and so let's time lapse.
Okay, so that concludes the tear down and then the tear up of putting it back together of the HC-155. The one thing that you'll probably run into, which I always run into when disassembling something like this, is that screws will get stripped. Uh, it happens. I've got spare screws, so it's not a big deal. The big deal is when it gets stripped is actually getting them out because it's always those crappy Allen heads where you, you don't have straight line access and you're going at an angle ends up stripping them out. So I'm probably going to be replacing, I think, three or four bolts just taking this apart. So keep that in mind. You take something like this apart, you may need some spare bolts. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section. If you like this video, if this was helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.